convention in Phoenix, Arizona, uh, and uh, when I got my uh, schedule, there was this weird panel listing called Convention Safety, Internet Safety. And I was like, okay. So I called the con chair and I was like, hey dude, what is this panel? And they're like, oh, this is a panel you're going to be doing with Officer So-and-so. And I was like, what? <laughs> and they're like, yeah, you're doing a panel with a police officer. I'm like, who saw it? That was a good idea. Like, <laughs> and so, like, there is this rule in Phoenix, and I, and I understand why. I think it's pokey the way they do it, but uh, they want to do this internet safety panel. It's pretty lame. It's pretty strange or danger. Like, there's beta files on the internet. Don't give your phone number out on Facebook. And MySpace is a predator. Like, it's that kind of thing. <laughs> and, like, I understand the need to educate people about that, but, like, why it was important for me to be a part of that bothers me. And I found out that they have a clause that if you can get one of the guests of honor or one of the speakers involved, that they get like a 30% cut in their taxes on Whoa. the rental of the space. Which you guys can attest is a pretty nice chunk of change taken off of the bill. So I, I basically said, I don't want to do this. And he's like, you don't have a choice. And I was like, no, I don't. I don't get along with cops at all. <laughs> it's like, uh, you don't have a choice. And so my friends were really worried because like for weeks I was trying to think of my, my line that I was gonna say after Mr. You know, Officer Friendly got finished talking. And the one we came up with, and this is its own gay joke, I was gonna tell them that I didn't dress up like the construction worker, the Indian chief, or the Navy guy, but I had something important to say too. <laughs> and younger people, that's a village people joke. <laughs> Uh, made of men. <laughs> but, uh, uh, as it ended up, the guy ended up being the coolest guy in the world because he forgot he had a speaking engagement that morning and I got to do the panel by myself. Uh, uh oh. But then that left me in a room full of parents and children. Oh. <laughs> I was like, good morning, class. <laughs> so, uh, so, I helped run a convention in Columbus, Ohio. In fact, as I was walking in, there's all this drama blowing up and stuff going on in our forums right now. And, and, and I'm aware, and I'm staff here this year. I run the dance. Yay! It's going to be great. Dance with It's going to be great. Yay! But I've been doing this for a long time, so I know kind of the ins and outs and the safety issues. And so I made a deal with the parents. I'm like, look, you know, I told them, I was like, I originally wasn't supposed to do this. This is two hours long. You're going to get really tired of hearing me talk. But the deal I made with them is they could ask me any question they wanted. Okay. They could ask me how we, what we do to keep their children safe from creepers. Well, you know, how would, how do we deal with pedophiles? Like, well, you know, what, what is our policy about people taking pictures of their kids? Anything. They could ask me anything, and I would try to answer in as eloquent a manner as I can. Uh, <laughs> Way and I would also let they can ask me what any word meant because like you know there's there you, we don't understand we speak a language that other people don't like people talking about chibi or something's being kawaii or yuri or yari buke or seme that's a different language that's a totally different language and this panel got its name from a very very horribly misunderstood version of that. Uh, there was a parent that was asking me about hentai. Oh. So she said she was now, is it true y'all play pornographic cartoons? So I was like, yes we do, actually, yes we do. And I like, <laughs> defended, I'm like, yes we do. And she's like, well now why is that appropriate? I said, well, uh, anime fans are 6 to 60, and if I ask somebody to pay $75 to be here for the weekend, adults are allowed to have adult entertainment. They don't stop us from going to the bar. And Adults should be able to do it. I said, I think as long as we meet our responsibility to ID at the door, and my phone is laughing at me. <laughs> yes, they did. That's funny. I just barred like four DJs from ever playing at my con, so I was like, they're like, they only brought it on themselves. I was like, yes, they did. Anyway, have fun making fun of me on stage tonight, guys. <laughs> They're playing for a room full of 200 people. I said, well, we'll have fun in our room full of 2,600 people. We'll see how that works. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so I was trying to explain why it's okay that we show hentai and like doing it in a way, and I was like, and I, I can always be counted on using a bad analogy.
me. That's why I don't teach children. That's why when I used to be a teacher, I used to teach adults. Because if I slip up and say the word damn, nobody's going to get crazy. And, uh, and I, was, I was trying to say that there's no sexual activity in the room. Because, you know, that would be weird. But they do have conventions <laughs> like that. They do. They have conventions like that. I, we almost ended up in a hotel where that was going on at a convention. And they're like, no, this is a bad fit. But uh, I was explaining what that was, and I go, well, you know what's really funny? I go, I find it so odd that so many parents are so supportive of their daughter's yowie obsessions. I go, especially with this country's attitudes towards homosexuality. And with those words, a woman about seven or eight rows back went stone-faced and, and, and did this. <laughs> What does Yahweh have to do with homosexuality? <laughs>